Welcome to the jungle of Hero Wars. In today's episode we will talk about the twins, Lars and Krista. And they are really twins. Their power comes from being and playing together. Ah, so beautiful. And in the next moment they destroy you with no mercy. Never underestimate their killer instinct. They have something like a synchronous attack and if the timing is good they do an absolute amazing burst damage. Lars and Krista were separated since their birth but they have found together again and make now your life hard in Hero Wars. Let's check them out in detail. Lars Ultimate summons a storm at the enemy's backline. It pulls every enemy into the eye and applies a watermark on the heroes. But it does no damage. His green skill is his strongest damage attack. It hits every hero but only for 29,000 at maximum. The blue skill strikes the nearest enemy with a lightning bolt for about 37,000 and stuns him for a while. Watermarked enemies are prioritized. Whoa, Dante has received over 96,000 damage. And here comes his violet skill into play. The watermarks triple his damage and increase the stun duration. Boom! And the multiplier calculation is at the end. So, every buff will be triple too. Woohoo! But only his ultimate provides these marks. Damn! Okay, what about crystal skills? Her ultimate hits hero by hero with an icy crystal, and the explosion damages nearby enemies too, for the same value. This happens 5 times, and non heroes like Amir's clones are also her target. The closer the enemies are, the more damage she will do. Her green skill applies watermarks, synergy, and it reduces the magic defense. Her blue skill freezes the ground with frozen needles. Every movement will hurt them now. If they are not moving, then it does nothing except melting and then applying watermarks. Her last skill gives her a nice survivability and reduces all received damage over 15% of her max life by 82%. This ability allows her even to go in front as a tank. The biggest synergy do we have between Lars moving ultimate and Krista's frozen needles. But also Krista's icy vengeance benefits by this grouping effect and if all comes together Game over. But we have also the watermark synergy which helps Lars a lot to be really dangerous with his lightning skills. And Lars helps Krista with his artifact weapon. He provides magic penetration. Krista doesn't have any penetration, so her damage will be always hard reduced by the enemy's magic defense, but her older brother assists her very well in this field. And Krista's artifact helps to increase the power again. Ah, they are so lovely constructed. Well done! The biggest question is how does this synergy really work? We have different timings and we have to know all of them, to be successful in the usage or in the countering. It's essential to understand completely the energy workflow. By the way, I've made a video for this too. Watch it. The first and best timing is when Lars and Krista get continuously non-crit damage by Kira. If the damage is about 50-60% to 60 of Lars' life, when Krista uses her first frozen needles, then you have hit timing number one. For twins good, for Kira's bad. The second timing is when Lars and Krista get zero or nearly zero damage. 
we see in this example very well the 50% energy when Krista uses her first needles. This is the reason why Lars needs the additional 50% of the first timing. Even without damage on Lars works their timing well and this behavior makes it not easy to fight against them. But they have another option, timing 3. Especially if you are trying to counter them with lower heroes and you have done about 20% damage on Lars, be carefully to have enough life to survive his lightning bolt. Otherwise he gets the killing blow energy and pulls your team through the needles. One of their biggest advantage is their versatile usage. They are already complete as a duo. No one else has watermarks for Lars or a better moving ability for Krista. They have no special yet, but I can tell you, Jorgen is their younger brother. Yeah, he looks older, but that's a problem if you're using dark magic. Together with him, Astaroth and Martha, do we have the classic twins team. Astaroth is good for the worst case resurrection, Jorgen stops the energy gaining and helps against other Jorgens, Martha holds your back safe and sometimes you can even heal your team with her. <laughs> It works pretty well against Orion, Dorian and Helios, alias the Bloody Mary. Martha takes always some missiles and heals herself very fast. Jorgen blocks the energy gaining for Orion so he can't heal himself and even with a not perfect timing is the win yours. This team setup is actually more a defensive team type and withstands against many unknown variations. Jorgen forces the opponent often to use another Jorgen and if he attacks with a physical team then it redirects the damage to Martha. She just heals herself and in the worst case she will be resurrected by Astaroth. And if you are lucky like this guy here, you can even sometimes win versus a classic Kark team. If you think Martha is not useful, you can replace her easily by Faceless. He's very great with magical heroes and has his position behind Lars. His power throw stuns the enemies and give you more control. If he copies Jorgen's or Krista's ultimate, then it's always a very powerful attack and his artifact weapon provides magic penetration. If your enemy has a magic defense buff, then you can just cancel it, or if your last has some problems, then you have a second option to activate it. For more power and even a good healing is Celeste a great option. Together with Jorgen we have merged many good abilities. The disadvantage is Lars on the last position. Fighting against Astaroth burns his energy dramatically. But the magic attack buffs are for last sugar. And with Celeste you will have sometimes many many at the same time. Don't forget, her artifact duration is only 4.5 seconds. Krista's violet skill makes her really tanky, but is she so strong to take the role of a tank? Let's see. Those Kira teams are a pain for nearly every tank, especially if Kira lands a crit. Boom! Wow, the reduction is really crazy. It looks like a small scratch. For an Astaroth would it be 160k? I'm impressed. Use this tactic wisely. Hits under 15% of her life won't be reduced and sometimes interrupts your ice block your own skill. Believe me, that's not your intention, but 
it's an interesting option. This brings us to the next question. Should we use always Astaroth as a tank? In situation where you think Lars could get a lot of damage, definitely yes. With his 180k life, he dies so incredibly fast and Astaroth gives you in such a situation at least a second chance. The last combo is the new Chaotic style with Dorian and Lilith. Last stands in Dorian's aura and heals now himself. Lilith does a great additional damage and if Last dies, we have also the option to win with her. Oh no, Last dies. Bam, full life. I love this variation. The cool thing is, even against the Jorgen Faceless combo, where our ultimates are often blocked, we do a great job. Now it's time for the counter. The first one is Antvari, the tree. His rooting ability works also very fine against the twins. Especially as a tank he can protect all his allies. If Lars uses his storm, only Antvari will be pulled through the needles and the rest is safe. With some healing you are well protected and you can avoid many many damage. One secret counter is Celeste. Even endgamers didn't believe me that her purifying sphere protects the hero by the displacing effect of Lars. Celeste casts here the sphere on Corvus and he's not moving now. If we imagine Celeste would give the sphere to Anvari, then we would have a perfect protection. The next counter is Mr. Jorgen with his unique ability to block the energy gaining. Especially with Faceless are they a real pain, not only for the twins, but Faceless Rays can be used to interrupt Last Lightning Bolt. And this is a big advantage. No stun, no damage, nice. How does this work? The key is the positioning of Lars and Faceless. You have only to remember minus one. That's it. Bye bye. Little joke. Of course I show you what I mean. Lars is in this case on position 5. Minus 1 means we need Faceless on position 4. And it worked. In the most cases you will fight against twins where Lars is on position 4. Minus 1 means Faceless on position 3. And again a wonderful interruption. This tactical move allows you now to beat stronger twins even with a low Jorgen faceless combination. But you need at least one strong damage dealer who does his damage in the best case after Jorgen's ultimate. Sometimes you will see Krista as a tank or a different constellation where Lars is on position 3, but even here works this great move perfectly. We have only to put Jorgen as a tank, but this is usually no problem. I've read really often that the Tori is the twins counter, but it's not true. On the left side we see a 70k stronger Satori team. He can usually put only one little mark on Lars and Krista and that's all. Both are not really impressed by him. Oh 
only in the fights where Faceless and Jorgen were there, yes, because they are the counter and Satoru is only the damage dealer, do we see the success. But now the game has changed something and we have the special mystic. And Centauri has gotten a very nice buff. Now his second skill applies for each mystic an extra mark. If we have at least three mystics together, then it's now enough to kill Lars immediately on max stats. It's not a real counter, but you have to know it. Additionally do we have gotten a mirror and her blue skill is very handy against twins. She blocks every magical damage below 45k. For mystics is this permanent and this means no damage by Krista's frozen needles and if her ultimate is not massively buffed then this too. And this ability is a counter. But we have more ways to break the twins. For example with the undead power of Corvus, Morrigan and Phobos. Phobos has gotten a nice rework and has now an energy stealing skill for the enemy with the highest magic attack. Krista has the sixth highest magic attack of all heroes and is usually his target and this is what we want. The enemy team has Nebula there. She increases the magic attack with her sphere and the one with her sphere will be Phobos target. Keep this in mind. And now the magic begins. We see Phobos bound with Krista really well and he gains now all her energy. We want even now the frozen needle damage to trigger Corvus altar. Krista gets a lot of pure damage which is too small to trigger her crystal. And Phobos gets all her energy. He can use his ultimate and cancels last magic penetration buff. Together with Morrigan's buff do we have a lot of magic defense and she stops of course the resurrection. It's a nice idea but you need well developed heroes to be successful. And in the end you have to kill the whole team. Phobos without magic penetration scratches only heroes like Astaroth and Martha. My favorite is the Cleaver, Faceless and Peppy combination. Faceless does here the preparation and brings Cleaver in the right position for the Clappy move. Peppy's damage is too low for Krista's ice block and it's really funny to watch this max fight. One interesting side info. The position of Lars Storm depends also on his viewing direction. If Lars turns around, then he summons the storm on a strange position. Let's talk about how to counter the counter. The first one is Judge. His blue skill allows you to slow your enemies. If you want to protect your twins against the faceless interruption, then is he perfect for you. These icy crystals are her slow and it's enough to change faceless timing a little bit and your last can cast his lightning bolt. The killing energy brings us to timing 2 and the rest is a known thing. By the way, 
This faceless interruption works only on attacking and not in defense. Keep this in mind. Back to Judge. His presence has another advantage. He has at max about 80,000 magic attack, while Krista has about 73,000. If we think on Phobos again, then we have changed his target and our twins are now fearless. Our next helpful hero is Celeste. Her dispelling ability is so amazing, it blocks even Kark's ultimate, Jorgen's energy blocking and any stuns. But she heals and dispels only the lowest target, so the control of it is really bad. In some situations she can be a really wonder woman in that team. As a magical team you will face sometimes Rufus. He is a defensive machine versus magical teams and you will hate him. His ability allows him to resurrect if he dies by magic or pure damage. So you can only kill him with a lucky basic attack. Additionally absorbs his shields and magic damage and heals him up. This makes it even harder to get your hit. In this example do we see Zisha. She has only magic attacks. Even a low Rufus cannot die by her attacks. She can do what she wants, there's no way to win for her. Be carefully if you're attacking Rufus. But yes, you think right. I have two tricks for you. The first one is Morrigan. She stops any resurrection, even of Rufus. We put her in our example before and just wait. You see the healing numbers but it doesn't heal him. If you think Celeste could do the same, no, he will revive in her cursed flame. Our second possibility is to use Jet. Huh? Is he not only for physical teams? Usually yes, but we can use his ability to stop the healing. Rufus shield can be a pain and with Morrigan could it be sometimes that you can't kill him because his healing is very good. No kill, no benefit of Morrigan. Jet's potion is not always active, but it helps to reduce the shield without healing. Depending on your damage at this time, can it be fast or take some time, but you will be successful at the end. If you are currently building up Lars and Krista, be sure to have Krista with more intelligence and magic attack than Lars. I've not mentioned Cornelius as a counter, because in the end he is attacking Krista and her ice block reduces the damage, so no real danger. If you are focusing too much on Lars, then he will be the target of Cornelius and Phobos, and this is a bad situation. I hope you've enjoyed this video, goodbye and peace.